<laughs> okay, the next story is a bit controversial because in the interests of educating people about the dangers of hypothermia, our reporter Lachlan Forsyth set out to get hypothermia. Now, you need to know how to avoid it because way too many people get caught out and die from it every year, and often it is entirely avoidable. So whoever you are, whether you're an experienced traveller or novice day walker, you honestly need to watch this because there's some good advice mm -hmm. in this. So turn the heating up, grab the blankie, and here's Lockie. Look, lying in a stream during a Wellington Southerly is a silly idea. So let's rewind a bit. You have to shiver through a lot to get right into hypothermia. It's the three things together, the cold, the wet and the wind. Every year, a couple of hundred people are hospitalised for hypothermia. And that's why I'm wandering up a windswept gully on Wellington's south coast. It's not just in the realms of people that go climbing up in the snow or for multi-day tramps. This is just the risk of getting going from exposure into hypothermia is for anyone. We're going to show just what happens when you get really cold, and this pill will come in handy. It records your temperature uh, full time, so it'll just keep recording and it'll store it all into its own memory. We are doing everything by the book. We obviously have Jim, who's one of the country's top hypothermia experts. We have Nick from the Mountain Safety Council, and we've got Nigel from the Wellington Free Ambulance. So we're not being cowboys about this. Normal body temperature is about 37.5 degrees. We're aiming to drop mine to 35. I know what you're thinking. No idiot's going to lie in a stream. But remember, this is just a demo. Oh. The number of New Zealand streams, the countless streams, they've got slippery rocks, and you, you know, you're hopping up the stream and you just slip and you're straight in, and you could be lying there injured and you couldn't get out. I run around these parts a lot, usually wearing clothes just like this. Your skin temperature, you're down at about ear temperature now. That's about three degrees. My body's desperately trying to raise my core temperature by shaking, diverting blood from my extremities. Every time that wind comes through, I can just feel the heat being sucked out of me. Heart rate's just shot up to 170. Mild hypothermia, when your core drops to 35 degrees. Symptoms are shivering, appearing drunk, denying there's a problem. Being fully grown and fit, I'm fighting the cold well. Oh, that actually hurts to clap. My neck's getting tight, my chest's getting tight. But I can't keep this up for long. I'm now burning calories six times faster than normal. What could I do right now then? It's finding shelter. Like if you're close to that road end, if you can get yourself back to civilization. I'm not yet hypothermic, but I'm on a slippery slope. You trying to put up a tent or trying to do survival stuff at the moment, you know, they could be the things that are going to save your life. You're not even hypothermic and yet you're so cold affected that you can't actually do those things. To show the difference even basic preparations can make, the boys bundle me into an emergency bag. Ideally, we'd get you up off the off the ground, we'd have a sleeping mat. I feel like a roast chicken. Just being out of that wind. Oh, I'm lying on rocks. I'm still soaking wet, but it feels like heaven. Wet, wind and cold. Preventing those will help prevent hypothermia. At least packing a jacket and a little bit of extra spare, snacky food you can take. You know, if you've got time to throw one, something like that in your backpack, that's even better. So that bought me a little bit of time, but not much. Two hours in and for the first time I've dipped below 37 degrees. I can't feel my hands. You can probably hear I'm struggling to talk. Even thinking starting to get a lot harder as well. From here it's downhill. 33 degrees, moderate hypothermia. Uncontrollable shivering, confusion, the umbles, stumbling, grumbling and mumbling, increased breathing and heart rate. Then 32 degrees, severe hypothermia, muscle stiffness, the shivering stops, collapse, unconsciousness, cardiac arrest, death. We pull the pin well before that. You couldn't keep this up for too too long, but inevitably you will get there. Uh, basically from here I'm just going to crash. Yeah. As it turns out, we ended the experiment just in time. 
See how my temperature didn't drop much over the two hours while my body was fighting? Look how it plummeted once I was effectively safe, but very low in energy. Walking out meant the cold blood from my extremities started circulating, bringing down my core temperature. I'm still going down. Yep, exactly. And it, I'm rugged up like an Eskimo, I'm still going down. It always happens with hypothermia, people get worse before they get better. For me, it was a spell in the sleeping bag and a welcome respite from that biting.